Mm. Well, great evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Certification Course. Uh, if you're here at the uh, Peaceful Solution headquarters and wherever you are, please be seated. Thank you for the warm welcome. And uh, <clears throat> as you all might or might not know, we've started a new, uh, the final book in the Intermediate Series. Not the final book in the Peaceful Solution program, but the Intermediate Junior High Series. We're in the Responsibility Unit. Um, we're going to be uh, picking up where uh, the last teacher, uh, Chris, left off. He uh, got through some of the procedural type uh, introductory notes. We'll be continuing on those and we'll be uh, uh, con continuing our journey toward chapter one. I'm not really in a hurry. Um, I'm a true believer that uh, the procedures, the purpose and objective, the notes to the teachers are probably some of the most important material that you're going to be looking at uh, as a teacher. Remember, this is a certification course and teachers are being certified. So teachers need to know, all of us teachers need to understand the language that's being used in these books, especially in the, uh, uh, the, the purpose and objective and the procedures themselves, because if, you, if you're like me, you know, I'm not exactly, you know, Mr. Brainiac, uh, but I do like to look up words. I think words are extremely important and the understanding and the comprehension of words is extremely important for teachers and, and I'm not saying that if you're teaching a class and a student asks you hey what does that word mean and you're kind of like well I don't know let's you know it's it's it shows great humility to look it up if you don't know you know to grab a dictionary or or google the the word and find out the meaning it shows great humility to do so because we're all still learning but if we're going through a certification course and we have the opportunity to look these words up ahead of time and we have the opportunity to write notes in our books, which you do, you can write in your book, you know, <laughs> used to be a, you know, a big deal to write in books, but you have permission to write in your books. <laughs> it's your book. You can, you can write notes in it. Um, but we really should be writing the definitions of words so we can share that information with our students. We want our students to be smart. We want our students to be intelligent. We want our students to be confident in, in the material that they're, that, they're under, that they're getting. And we want the teachers to, be, to feel the same about their presentations of this material as well. You should be confident. You should be bold in your presentation of the peaceful solution. I'm not talking about being conceited or being arrogant or prideful. We don't teach pride. We, we get rid of pride. We, it's a negative character trait. But I'm talking about confidence and being bold in, in your knowledge and in your, in your know-how in presenting this program and being bold and assertive in knowing that if you practice the principles in this program, you're going to have success. Okay? If you're going to have success. You can guarantee that. Even though it might be a bumpy road, Okay, I'm not saying it's going to be smooth. <laughs> you're going to go through testing. You're going to go through, you're going to have to endure some uh, pretty heavy tests at times. But you can be confident in knowing you're making the right decision and you, the outcome is going to be very great in the end, even if you have to go through a lot of uh, troublous times. All right, so um, let's look at, uh, Chris went over the preface, the influence from the teacher. And... Uh, by the way, I need to mention to viewers that are watching online, if you go to the Facebook page, obviously you're there, you're watching, uh, there's a drop-down menu at the top. It's got all the, the, the manuals. We're in the fifth manual, the responsibility unit. Okay, that's where we're at. Go ahead and download that manual and follow along with us. Okay? So, again, Chris went over the preface. He went through the introduction. And he left off on Roman numeral 17. If you haven't, if you never took Roman numerals or le learned Roman numerals in school, it's XVII. Uh, okay, so 
and he started on how to use this program, and that's what we're going to pick up tonight. He read through that first part, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it again just to get our mind back on uh, track here. You ever notice how just three or four days, you know, we, we only have three and four day lapses between classes because we have two a week. But, you know, the reason why we have to go back over certain things is because we forget a lot. Okay, and certain things might stuck in your mind from Chris's class and from Catan's class and David's last class, but, you know, bits and pieces, okay? So it's very important to rehearse these things, which is one of the things that we learn to do in this program. So how to use the program? It says, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program consists of five units that cover character, acceptance, self-control, respect, and responsibility. Each unit is designed and formatted to gently lead the student with the basic concepts of character development to becoming a responsible citizen in society. And I, I underline each unit is designed to and formatted to gently lead a student. Gently lead, meaning, you know, you don't want to start them off on concepts from the responsibility unit when they haven't even taken the character unit yet, okay? Because believe it or not, as you as you know, you know, I mean, you, you all are being certified, so you can see the importance of following this step by step. They won't have the understanding that they need to have if you jump ahead, you know? This program is designed to be taught step by step by step by step in increments, okay? It's formatted that way. The 50-plus teachers that helped put this thing together, along with the author of The Peaceful Solution, uh, knew the importance of teaching it in that way, to penetrate the heart and the mind of students and to make the biggest impact on them, okay? And if we, if we choose to not uh, follow that procedure and that instruction, you know, they're not going to get the full benefit that they could get. Uh, from an understanding that they need to have if we jump ahead. So it's meant to gently lead that student with these basic concepts of char character development. It's important that you, the teacher, work through these units in the order presented to obtain maximum benefit. As you explore each unit, you will realize that the issues covered are very relevant to our young people. Take as much time as you can to explain the concepts, reiterate where and when possible, and solicit as much student participation as possible. And that word, you know, reiterate, means to do something again and again and again and again until you get a desired result, you know. Um, you know, we, we learn that way. We're human beings. That's how we learn. You know, we don't always get, we don't get it the first time. We don't get it the second time. We don't get it the third time. We might have to be knocked on the noggin, you know, quite a few times before we like, oh, you know, that's what they're talking about. Um, it's just that way, even as adults. So we have to continually rehearse these concepts over and over and over again. And in different ways, you know, you can bring forth different information, different news stories like we do in the classes. Uh, we've gone over the environment in two different books. But each lesson, we weren't talking about the same thing. You know, we kept bringing forth different concepts about the environment and how we're polluting the environment and the damage that's being done, you know. And, and so you can, you can teach these lessons, and there's such a deep well of uh, resources and knowledge and information that you can share with your students to show them how these concepts are either being kept or they're not being kept, these principles in the peaceful solution, how they're being kept or they're not being kept, the benefit of keeping them, the consequences of not, et cetera. So, you know, there's, we, we, and then it says we need to solicit as much student participation as possible. Now, why do you think you want to do that? <laughs> why is it important to get students to participate? Because you want to know what they're comprehending. You want to you want to see that they're understanding. You know the only way that you can, because you can look at a student, and you can say, "Do you understand?" And they'll go, "They'll go, yeah." Right? They'll always say yes, 
they'll always shake their head yes most of the time because a lot of times they lack the humility to say no i didn't get that you know because we all don't want to seem like we're stupid right when you're not really stupid you know if you don't understand something that's fine you just need to say no i didn't get that can you can you reiterate that or can you point that out uh, a different way or can you re-explain that or whatever we need to do but don't take their word for it when they say because <laughs> they almost always will say shake their head up and down like they got it okay so then let's go to this part where it's teacher's manual that's where chris left off it says the teacher's manual is comprised of seven lesson plans each followed by the corresponding chapter these chapters are duplicated in the student's handbook so in other words the students have, you know, the, the the chapters, the seven chapters, but they don't have the lesson plans and the procedures that the teacher's manual has, is all that's telling you. And then purpose objective says the purpose objective is your, in fact, can you go to the first slide? I think I have a slide on this one. Okay. Yeah, let me explain this first slide, too. That you see there's two responsibility units there, right? Chris showed the one on the right with the author Israel Hawkins working diligently to proofread the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, showing great responsibility and doing his job there. Uh, but on the left, there's the uh, uh, another cover of the responsibility unit that you'll see if you download it on Facebook online. You'll see that, that unit right there. They're both the same content, they just have a different cover. So I don't want you to be confused that you think you have the wrong book. If it says responsibility on it, that's the junior high series, okay? They're both the same book. Now one's a student workbook and one's a, and I'm not sure, I, I really don't know the answer. I'd, th that responsibility book is the one that's got the clock on it um, with the seven minutes to midnight. I think that's what they set the doomsday clock at in 1947, didn't they? I think it started at seven minutes to midnight. And, uh, yeah, I guess we should be preparing, you know. In fact, we're going to learn these things in the responsibility unit about preparation and the importance of being responsible and preparing for a rainy day, et cetera. We won't get into that tonight, but much later in the unit. But the covers are different, but they're the same content. And I'm not sure that the one with the clock is only a teacher's manual if, or if the student workbook always looks like that and they recently changed it, I don't know. Possibly I'll have an answer for you in the next class. But it is the responsibility unit. Let's go to the next slide. Um, purpose objective, yes, I do have a slide for that for the viewers at home. Because I want you to understand, first of all, what is purpose objective? Because they're not the same word. Even though they're used here in the same, they're used interchangeably here, they don't mean the same thing. Okay, purpose, as you can see in the slide seat, means the reason something is done or created. The reason something is done or created. So the reason this lesson was created and done is the purpose of this lesson, okay? Now the objective is the end or the goal that you're hoping to attain by teaching the lesson. It's the, it's the goal that you have to get across to the student in this lesson, okay? In this particular lesson plan, okay? And it says purpose objective. It says the purpose objective is your evaluation tool for what or how much the student should learn from the lesson taught. Now I want you to underline this if you didn't do it already in the previous books when we went over this same material about uh, how to use the program. It says most of our objectives Remember what objective is, it's a goal or an end that you're trying to attain. It's like the finish line. Most of our objectives are measured in behavioral changes, <laughs> okay? Unlike other programs where you get an A and a B and a C and a D and an F, you know, based on your knowledge, your book knowledge, in other words, you know, you have to show, you give the right answer, you know, multiple choice answer, or you have to give an answer to a question that's written down and you write the answer on a on a test paper well that's not quite how we do it here you know uh, how we gauge the progress of our students is how they're behaving and the changes that we see in their lifestyle and in their life 
in general. Now, granted, I want you to understand something. When you're teaching a program, you're teaching your students, you only have them for, you know, what, 45 minutes, an hour. That's uh, how many hours are there in a week? 168. <laughs> so you only have them for 45 minutes or, you know, 60 minutes, and then 167 hours uh, they have to be influenced by who? <laughs> uh, society, TV. Uh, music, their friends, the internet, billboards, magazines, books, cats, remember dogs, animals or influences, colors, smells, you know, remember all those, inf there, there's all these other influences that they're going to be bombarded with for that next 167 hours. You only have them for that one short space of time. Now, I can tell you from, I've been teaching this program since 2002, that's what, 21 years, okay? So I can tell you that um, the only way I knew, the only way I could know if my students really were making progress, and when, like for instance, we teach uh, child protective services classes. And so if I hear that, uh, Sometimes you'll hear it from the students themselves. They'll tell you, yeah, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this better, and I'm not getting angry. Uh, I'm not taking my anger out on others like I used to, or I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I'm not hitting people when I get angry, and I'm not, I'm not stealing anymore, or I'm not, you know, uh, thinking negative thoughts about others. I'm replacing my negative thoughts. You know, you'll hear these things from them. But then we also get reports from caseworkers, probation officers, caseworkers and CPS that they see changes in that person, in their attitude and in their lifestyle at home because they go and they check their homes. They, they have to interview them. And many, many times a peaceful solution will always come up in their conversation about how it's helping them. And uh, so... But if you only have them in your classroom and you only see them for that 45 minutes, do you really know, like, how it's changing their life? How are you really going to know when you don't know when you don't even see them for the the rest of the week? You only see them for that one hour. Well, there's ways of telling. You know, they will tell you things, but sometimes they could be telling you things just that you think you want. They think you want to hear. You know. But it also comes out in their speech. Sometimes the way they speak starts to change. The topics, the, the way they speak or the, their perception starts to change about certain things. You'll start to see them. They might have a calmer demeanor, et cetera. You might see physical changes like in their appearance, et cetera, when they're learning certain things. Um, but for the most part, the reason I'm mentioning this is we're not measuring them by how smart they are in book smarts, how well they can read or, you know, uh, et cetera. But we're, we're gauging them on, are they taking the information and are they applying the information? And if they're doing that, they're successful. Even if they make mistakes or make a wrong choice and they fall, if they pick themselves up and dust themselves off and they keep trying, they're successful. Okay, they didn't. The only time you fail is if you quit completely and just walk away and, 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 and never do it again, never try again. That's where you fail. You don't fail if you fall and you get back up and you keep trying. Okay, that shows great uh, determination. That's a positive character trait. Remember where you determined not to give up once you started on something? That's not failure. That shows that you're determined to keep trying until you get it right. Okay, and that takes self-control, which is another positive character trait. Okay, so, you know, we don't look, we don't gauge, we don't give them A's and B's and C's and D's in that way. You know, we, we, we gauge them by their behavior, okay, and that's how, the only way that you can in this program. Okay, so it says, please watch for these changes as your indicator of which concept might need to be reinforced, okay, and there's as we'll see here in the next 
part, there's enrichment activities to do that. It says procedure. Let's go to the next slide. I think I have a procedure slide. Okay, for those viewers at home, procedure. It says the steps outlined in the procedures are for flow and continuity. We ask that you read the procedures prior to presentation in order to guide the students more effectively. Try to become very familiar with all the steps and the main ideas involved. And now, please underline this or highlight it like, I, like you see on the screen. Ask questions periodically to be sure your students understand what's being presented. Okay? Ask questions. Because you know what? Have you ever noticed a lot of times people don't ask questions? They'll just sit there and listen to you, but they won't ask questions. Sometimes they're afraid to ask questions. Some people are shy. Their personality is a shy personality, and they might not feel comfortable raising their hand in front of other people or even asking they might be shy they might be thinking oh you know he's going to think I'm stupid you know if I ask that question you know so they might not want to ask the question okay out of fear okay so we have to ask questions because that's the only way we're going to know to be able to gauge if they're comprehending what they're learning okay because again you can ask them if they understand and they're going to shake their head yes all day long but you got to ask them so you can hear it out of their mouth that they truly understand the concept that you're trying to get through, okay? Okay, so it says, um, if your objective is not adequately met, repeat it or use the enrichment activities found in the handbook section of your manual to increase understanding of the lesson. You know, enrichment activities, you know, they have crossword puzzles and and you know, a lot of times the students even ask, they'll say, hey, can I do those crossword puzzles and stuff, those word finds and stuff? And I say, yeah, of course. And that's so beneficial because those things, you know, them looking at the words and doing those searches and stuff, it puts those words in their mind. It's, it's, it's a great influence on the mind, okay? And it shows them, that, hey, look, you can be entertained with positive things. You don't have to, you know, be entertained with negative uh, uh negative uh, activities you know you can ha you can do something to build your mind to make it positive to have positive words flowing into your mind that build your character and they really do like those activities I'm not just making that up they'll always ask hey can I do those of course you can do them okay it says uh, enrichment activities are also great for reinforcing the concepts that are taught okay all right so let's go to the next I believe yeah, and, and I want to talk about the word comprehension, okay, because I've mentioned it a couple times already. You want to make sure your students are comprehending, and we need to comprehend. You know, we're talking about students right now, <laughs> but we as adults also need to make sure we're comprehending, that we're, remember, we have to practice a peaceful solution before anybody else. We're the teachers, so we need to make sure we even comprehend the things that we're learning. But comprehension as you can see on the slide means uh, the action or capability of understanding something okay the action or capability of understanding something now remember somebody and you see that word capability um, are all people capable of learning the same way no not necessarily because some people might be blind so they can't read. So they're not capable of reading, but they're capable of hearing, right? Um, some people might be really, really willing to learn the material or very willing to uh, do certain but they're not able, they're not capable. They're not capable of doing that. So, you know, there has to be, there's other ways that they can be taught, in other words. Uh, some of the synonyms of comprehension are understanding, grasp, grip, conception, uh, cognition, we're going to talk about that word in a few minutes, knowledge, awareness, perception, interpretation. Interpretation. Now let's talk about interpretation for a minute. <clears throat> um, well, I might be jumping ahead. Go to the next slide. Let me see what the next slide was. And Let me see if, no, that's not, no, let's, let's, Go ahead and take them down. Um, let me see if I can put this in a way that's understandable 
and we're going to get to the slide that explains it a little bit more, but when I say, when it's talking about comprehension and interpretation, do you know how we've been constantly showing, like, the word moral, okay? Everybody has their own understanding what the word moral means, okay? But the peaceful solution clearly defines what the word moral means in the book. That's the interpretation of the word moral, okay? You don't need to go outside of that to try to find something, okay? I'm not saying that you can't uh, try to grasp a deeper understanding of something, but I'm, what I'm saying is if it doesn't match what the peaceful solution is telling you the word moral means, then it's not the true meaning, okay? Now, that might sound a little bit arrogant, but it's true nonetheless, okay? Because... I've shown, we've demonstrated, many of the teachers have demonstrated again and again that you can look up certain words that are defined in the peaceful solution in a dictionary and they're going to add something or they're going to subtract something from it that's very, very benef that would that if they subtract or add from it, it's going to take away the full meaning of what it means or even throw you off to what the true meaning actually is. Okay? So... It's really important that you really let them know that, look, the definitions that are found in the Peaceful Solution book, the interpretation, in other words, is the one that you should go with, okay? In other words, you know, the definitions that are given, that's why it's important that we give the definitions so the students can truly understand these concepts that we're getting across to them. Otherwise, you know, you can get mixed up because there's a lot of, remember the word respect, what they say in the world, you know, they say, uh, out there in other programs, they say, well, you know, you have to give respect to get respect. That's their interpretation. But that's a faulty interpretation. You don't have to give respect to get respect. You have to give respect regardless of whether you're getting it or not, correct? So the interpretation that we're giving is the one that's correct. How do we know that? Because it's the moral interpretation. And how do you know it's moral? Moral means it doesn't bring harm to you, others, or the environment, right? It doesn't bring any harm mentally, physically, emotionally, in any way, okay? But when you say you have to give respect to get respect, what you're saying is somebody can disrespect that person unless they respect them first. And so what could, what could occur in that case? Can't harm come from that? well, you didn't respect me, so I'm going to call you a punk. You called me a punk, so I'm going to call you a punk. And then what takes place? It escalates. Okay, so harm comes from that. It's not moral. So the interpretation that the peaceful solution is giving you is the moral interpretation of what you're trying to get across. Do you follow me? I don't see any heads going like this. <laughs> so that must mean you don't know, right? <laughs> I should question each one of you individually afterwards. But, uh, but no, it's not being arrogant. It's just being realistic, okay? The, the teachers that put this together knew these things. They knew that, that the other character education programs that were defining certain words or, you know, that were making these posters that they were putting in schools where children are walking by and they see respect, you've got to give it to get it, or, you know, uh, you know, responsibility means to follow your heart or whatever it says, you know, they're faulty. It's faulty. It's going to lead to something wrong. It's going to lead to a, a, someone getting hurt someone making a wrong decision, etc. So the peaceful solution interpretation or the peaceful solutions definitions are the ones that we should be going with. Okay, now, and as long as, what I'm saying too is, as long as the definition in the dictionary fits what the peaceful solution is saying, then it's correct, okay, is what I'm saying, okay? In other words, not that you can't use them because you see I use them all the time, but I also show you if it's there's something faulty in there. You know, it's like uh, uh, one parent told me, yeah, I watch TV with my child, but I also point out all the things that are negative and all the things that are positive, you know, which to me it's like I, I don't even know why you want to watch it. But uh, a child doesn't know how to tell the difference. Remember who you're teaching here. 
you're teaching young junior high students, okay? And I'm not saying they're by any means that they're they're dumb people. They're pretty smart, okay? Uh, when it comes to street smarts, when it comes to smarts, they can read. You know, if you ask a student to read, that was the point I was going to make about comprehension. Some students can read extremely well, and they can read big, big words, too. I know young people that are four years old that can read a high school book. But does that mean that they comprehend what they're reading? Because you can ask them to read, and you can ask them to read a, a section out of this uh, Peaceful Solution book. Can you say, can you read that next section? And they can read it perfectly. But if you question them afterwards, well, what did you just read? They can't tell you. Okay? And that's a problem. You want your students to comprehend. That's why you're not just trying to rush through things. You don't see us teachers rushing through this. We want you to comprehend the information. We want you to understand it. We, we don't want you to walk away going, what was that guy saying? He used some $50 word that I don't even know, you know? Or, you know, he never did define that word, so I'm kind of lost. I'm not really sure what, you know, that was about. Well, we need to take the time. We need to try to explain. And I know I'm not saying you're going to have all this time, you know, to be able to, to teach certain students. But what I am saying is you should take the time to make sure. If you look at a word and you say to yourself, I don't think, you know, I would understand that if I hadn't looked it up. I mean, if I wouldn't, if you look at a word and you say, that doesn't look like a word that somebody's going to quite understand. I think I better look it up ahead of time and write the definition down or something. You should do that. You should do that. You should care enough to do that. Okay, so where was I? Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the next slide. Probably catch up where I'm at. I'm on. Okay, I was looking at Morocco. Okay, I'm jumping ahead. Okay, you can take the slide down. Okay, so I'm looking at student handbook now on 18. Well, hold on. Did I read this? Yeah, I did. Okay. So we're on Roman numeral 18, student's handbook. Let's talk about the student handbook. The student handbook is a replica of your manual, except that the student's handbook has the answers in the back. What? We put the answers in the book? They're going to know all the answers, man. Well, don't you want them to? You want them to know all the answers? Remember the, uh, the I think everyone remembers that seminar where the uh, Peaceful Solution author told us that uh, there was a teacher that said, nobody gets an A in my class. You know, he was bragging, you know, this professor, you know, this college professor, you know, nobody gets an A in my class. You know, like, well, what are you saying? You know, you're too stupid to get help your students get an A or what are you saying? <laughs> you know? I mean, you don't want your students to get the best grade? You don't take any, yeah, they, the world would call it pride. We don't call it pride, but you don't have any care or concern or you don't, you're not well pleased when a student makes the right decision and gets great grades you, or, or makes, solves the problem correctly. That doesn't make you joyful. That doesn't bring any joy to you. I mean, it should. And when you see, you know, when you're teaching the peaceful solution and you see students making better decisions and dropping negative character out of their life, man, it makes you feel great, man. I mean, it makes you feel great to see that that person's feeling better, you know. I remember uh, one way to illustrate it would be, and I'm going to use a, a, a math teacher in this case, uh, I used to have a, 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 a what do you call it? tutoring center, tutoring center where we taught the peaceful solution and math. Okay, it was called Making the Grade Learning Center, is what it was called. And uh, the math teacher there was extremely uh, gifted uh, math teacher, and the students would come in for lessons, and they would look like you know all sullen and you know defeated and. You know, they look like, you know, I'm never going to be able to get this. And, you know, like they would walk in looking like a wilted flower. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, they would just walk in looking like a flower that hadn't been watered in weeks. Okay. And after just one or two sessions with a tutor, you know, a tutor where, you know, they're one-on-one, -on -one, right? Getting one-on-one -on -one attention from a teacher and they're having the math explained to them. 
and they're having character education incorporated into it at the same time without them even really knowing that's what's going on. Uh, they, after about one or two sessions, they would walk out of there looking like a million bucks, man. I mean, completely different. Their demeanor was completely different. They had a bold, confident look. I'm not saying arrogant. What I'm saying, they felt like, I could do this, you know? Like, I can do this now. You know, it's not as hard as I thought it was, you know? And they had that confidence. And, and really, that's what you can see in students that once they learn that, look, I'm in control of my emotions. You know, that was a big thing for me, that, that when I, the Peaceful Solution taught me that, look, you know, nobody can make you angry. You, you, you allow yourself to be angry. You make the choice to be angry. Nobody's making you angry. You have, it's you that's allowing what somebody else does. And because of your thoughts and because you're not controlling your emotions in that case, it's leading, it, it's leading to these things. I didn't understand that. But once I got the grasp of that, it was like, wow, okay, that makes sense. So it's going to be a lot, it got a lot easier as time went on to start understanding that, hey, when things came up, I had more confidence that, look, I can handle this. You know, it's not, it's not that big of a deal, okay? Because those concepts were put in my mind that, look, you can do this, and here's how you do it. Here's the tools. Here's the way to do it. Here's step by step how it's done. Just keep practicing it over and over again until you get it right. <clears throat> that's how you develop the confidence or develop the character trait is through practice. And remember, they don't fail. They're not failing if they fall and they don't make the right decision. If they get back up and they keep trying, they're successful. Okay, that's success. You didn't give up. Because remember, they're practicing other character traits when they get back up and they keep trying. They're practicing positive character if they do. So don't put them down for it. They're continuing to try to overcome whatever issue they're having. Okay, so um, <clears throat> it says, um, encourage students to read their handbooks. I'm, I'm in students' handbooks, by the way. I know I rant sometimes and we lose our place, but we're talking about the student handbook. It says, encourage students to read their handbooks before class so they can contribute to discussions or help in problem solving. Um the activities are designed to help students apply the concepts taught in real life situations. Encourage students to complete the activities. I always told the students, hey, when you take your book home, lay it on the coffee table where dad can read it or mom can look into it and see what you're reading about, you know, because parents like to, you know, look in your books to see what you're learning. So, you know, stick it somewhere where they'll poke their nose into it and be nosy and look in it, you know, because they want, we want them to learn too. You know, we used to give, uh, we still do, but in the in the lower grades, in the elementary grades, you know, the activities that we use in the Peaceful Solution program were designed for the student to take them home and stick it on the refrigerator, you know, like it would say something like, I'm learning about ownership. And ownership means I own something. And it means I, sh you know, ownership means we should always ask before we touch somebody's belongings. And, and it would put things in the parent's mind that that would remind them how they need to behave. So it was helping not only the child, it was helping the parents as well. And that's what we're hoping to do is, is share that with other people. And that's one way you can do it. Okay, so now let's look at role of the teacher. It says, as educators, it's extremely important that we understand the tremendous role we play in the lives of our students. I'm going to tell you a, a, a true thing, a true fact, a true principle in the peaceful solution. The first teacher that teaches you the peaceful solution, the first person that that presents the peaceful solution to you, that you, let me rephrase that. The first person that they hear about the peaceful solution from that teaches them about it, they that, that person's exalted in their mind. Like they... they they look up to that person, it's like more than anybody, okay? And other teachers of the peaceful solution will come along and reinforce those things, but they always have a special place in their heart and mind for that first teacher that presented it to them. 
Okay, there's just something about it. I've never understood it, but they do. They really, really look up to the person that they first learn it from, okay, for some reason. Because it makes a huge impact in their life. Believe it or not, it's not just, you know, this isn't just a character education program. Man. This is this changes people's hearts and minds. This is like the roadmap to true, lasting, prosperity, peace, well-being. Learn how to solve your problems. You know, every problem has a solution, you know. Uh, you don't have to go to the, to the monks on the mountain you know, on Tibet, you know, climb the Himalayas to get this information, or you don't have to dive to the deepest depths of the ocean to find it. You know, it's right here, man. It's right here in front of you, <laughs> right? All the answers are in these books, okay? So, you know, we're not, it's not just, it's not just words in a book. This is life, life-giving information. It helps people escape death. It pulls people out of ditches. It restores people's health. It restores people's relationships if they use it. Like if parties decide, yeah, well, let's try this, you know, and if they apply the peaceful solution, the only time it don't work, as the author said, as Chris said in last class, the only time the peaceful solution doesn't work is if you don't use it. But it will work if you use it, guaranteed, 100%. So, again, the role of the teacher. Um, therefore, our participation in this program is essential to its success. Review the concepts every time a class or a situation arises, not just when the lesson is presented. As significant influences in the lives of our students, we can lay the foundation to help them build strong moral character. You see that? You, you are a significant influence in their life. Okay. We're not, you know, you're not just teaching. You're you're their friend. You're act. You're a true friend to that person. You know why? Because you're a true friend. Tells somebody how to make right choices. That's a true friend. That's what a true friend does. So you're not only teaching them. You're being their friend. You're you're being an actual friend. You're the first friend they might have. You know that's actually guiding them away from anything that's going to bring harm to their to their life and show them how to help others get out of that same ditch that they're in because the whole world's in the ditch okay they really are you don't believe me look what's going on in Israel and Palestine right now you got people taking sides taking sides well I think this side's right well, I think that side's right well you know what you're both wrong. <laughs> if you think war is going to solve the problem, you're both wrong. Okay? You're both wrong. So now what you need to do is, and that's what we are as peaceful solution instructors. We're mediators. A mediator doesn't take sides. What a mediator does is shows both sides how to get out of the ditch. The mediator shows both sides, look, there's a peaceful solution for you to solve your problem. They don't take sides. They don't take sides. The world takes sides, you know, Democrat, Republican, uh, whatever religion you belong to, you know, they all take sides. You know, they take sides, but we don't take sides. We don't need to take sides. What you need to do is just follow the peaceful solution and help each side make better choices. Teach them both how to make a better choice. Okay, so... Um, there is a solution to the problems in today's society. Wow, <laughs> there is? There's no way we could solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, is there? There's no way. You know what? We could solve this conflict in five minutes. <laughs> we could solve this conflict in five minutes. If they would sit down, all parties would just sit down right now and listen to what you're listening to right now. And stop thinking about, what, money, power, greed. Uh, how am I going to look? Uh, you know, whatever else they're thinking. And they just take this 
in for this very simple. I mean, that's what's so that's what's so um, hard to believe about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what's so hard to believe. It's like it's so simple to solve that problem. Okay, it's so simple. Nobody would believe how simple it is. It's right in front of you. You have it right here. This is how you solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's right here in this book. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes I get too excited and I forget there's a microphone. <laughs> um, That's how we solve it. We show both sides. Look, war is not the answer. War will only bring more death, destruction, misery, suffering, and, and eventually complete desolation, complete ruin, complete destruction for both sides. How's there a winner there? We have nuclear bombs now. How's there a winner there? What are you going to rule? A bunch of ashes if you win? <laughs> what are you going to rule over? What's there going to be left to rule over? What are you going to have power over now? bunch of burnt trees and dead fish and dead animals and soil that you can't grow anything in and an atmosphere that's uh, raining down death for you know what a thousand years afterwards what are you what are you what are you gonna gain what's there to gain here what's what's what are you gonna have yeah go in your bunker go in your bunker go in your bunker and come out afterwards if you can come out for two or three months afterwards, come outside and see what's left. That's what you'll have to rule over. How smart is that? That doesn't seem very smart. <laughs> hmm. Peaceful solution could show them how very quickly how to turn this around. We could have peace in 30 days. The author told us that. He's got it up on the website right now. He told you, peace in 30 days, we can do it. Come here, learn the peaceful solution, and take this information back to your country and be the peacemaker there. You can do it. You could do it. You could be the peacemaker in your country. Share it with your, with your leaders. Share it with your city councilmen here in America. Share it with your mayor. Share it with your senators, your congressmen. Share it with everybody. Tell them about it. Be a peacemaker. So it says, there's a solution to today's problems in society. The Peaceful Solution Character Education Program has provided you with the solutions needed to make a difference through educating our children on the values and morals they will need for a lifetime. So the Peaceful Solution has given you the answer. Okay? Free of charge. <laughs> I, had a, I had a man call me uh, uh, two days ago, and he says... Uh, uh, his probation officer told him to call and told him to sign up for some parenting classes. And, and I said, well, I said, okay. I said, he goes, well, what do I need to do? And I said, well, you can do the classes. We have online classes. We have, uh, we can do phone classes. We can do uh, uh, WhatsApp or we can do Skype or, you know, whatever you'd like to do. And he says, really, I don't have to leave my house to do it. I said, no, you can do it right from your own home. He goes, okay. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. And then he, he, I know, I know what he was getting to, you know, it was the last question he asked. He says, uh, he says, well, how much does it cost? Right. He was afraid. I could hear the fear in his voice that I was going to tell him, you know, some pie in the sky estimate, you know, like a couple hundred bucks or, you know, 500 bucks, a thousand dollars or, you know, something. And I told him, oh, it's free of charge. He said, what? <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> Yeah, free of charge. We don't charge anything for it. And then I even told him, if you give me your address, we'll send you a book for free. He's like, <laughs> I could hear him almost want to drop the phone in shock, you know, like, what? <laughs> but that's the peaceful solution, man. That's the peaceful solution. We want everyone to learn this program. We don't want there to be any uh we don't want there to be any excuse, no barriers, no nothing, okay? We want everyone to learn. We want the whole world to know about this, okay? And 
I'm going to tell you right now, we have teachers in the Peaceful Solution that are extremely active in getting this message out to the whole world right now, even as we speak. Okay? Uh, Diligently working to get this thing spread everywhere. Okay? And it's spreading. It is spreading. It's spreading like wildfire right now. All right. So we got through the role of the teacher. Now we're on Unit 5, Responsibility. We're on Lesson Plan Page A1, is that where we're at? Or did I skip something? Yeah, I did. No, I'm on, I'm on, uh, I'm on Unit 5, Responsibility Introduction to the Unit, right? Okay, Lesson Plan Page, Lesson Plan 1, Page A, sorry. Okay, so responsibility, introduction to the unit. It says, have you ever considered what our world would be like if everyone took responsibility for their actions and learned from the outcome of their choices? If everyone developed this one positive character trait of being responsible, responsible, it would greatly improve the morale in our homes, schools, and society as a whole. Can we put up the next slide so we can look at the word morale? Because it looks a lot like moral, and I don't want you to be confused. It's not the same word, okay? So uh, morale simply means uh, an amount of confidence felt by a person or group of people, especially when in a dangerous or difficult situation. I'm going to read that again. Morale. It means uh, the amount of confidence felt by a person or group of people, especially when when in a dangerous or difficult situation. Now, I just told you about that word confident, right? that you can be confident and bold and assertive using the peaceful solution, that doesn't mean proud and arrogant. It means you can be confident that if you make your decision according to what's written in these books, according to what you're learning in these books, if you apply these principles, you can be confident, you can be uh, sure that any dangerous or difficult situation, you can actually get through it. You can actually have a great outcome. That's the morale that it's talking about. You can have high morale in that way. You can have maximum morale, okay, as you see in that picture right there. If you follow the concepts here, and look here, don't worry about how it looks. (laughs) Don't worry about how things look. Don't worry about the appearance of the situation at the time because it might not look like, it might not look great. And you might think, man, is this really what I need to do? Because it sure doesn't seem like if I do this, if I follow the peaceful solution, ain't I going to be laughed at? Isn't everyone going to ridicule me and mock me? And, you know, is this really going to work? Yeah, it's really going to work if you do it. Don't worry. Just do it. Be confident. Just do it, and it'll work. (laughs) You know, you'll see the result. You might not see the result right away, but you're going to get, you're going to see the result in the end. You're going to see the result of your effort. Remember about planting. You don't know, you plant the seed, do you see the result the next day? Do you see the the fruits of your labor the next day? No. You got to plant the seed. And sometimes you do see it very quickly. You sometimes you do see the result right away, but not all the time. But keep making that same keep making the decision that the peaceful solution gave you to make. Stick with it. Don't give up. Be determined. And in the end, you will see that you made the right choice because you stuck with what the peaceful solution told you to do. You're, you'll, you'll benefit from that. You will see. And not only you will benefit, but everyone around you will benefit because peace, the things that we do, the principles that we, that we practice in this program affect not only ourselves but everyone around us. Okay, so you're actually helping everyone in your environment. You're also helping. Remember, we learned about the microbes and the, and the, the animals, and you know everyone's going to benefit from your choices if you're if you're following the peaceful solution. Everyone's going to benefit from it. No one's going to be hurt from it. Okay, so it says, uh, oh, go back to that slide because I wanted to read a uh, straight talk from uh, the respect unit on page seven. If you recall about the word confident. It says, uh, recognizing your value as a... I'm sorry, I can't read this slide. 
Is there any way to get this closer to me, Michael? Is there a way to get that? I'm sorry, I can't read the blurry, uh, the blurry uh, picture there. Okay. Recognizing your value as an individual should never be confused with being conceited. Okay? It says, appreciating your value simply means to acknowledge your talents and... What's that say? I'm sorry, it's a blurry word. Anybody see it? What does it say? Potential. Potential, right? Okay, it says, Appreciating your value simply means to acknowledge your talents and potential and to make every effort to live up to your potential. You can do so confidently knowing that your values reflect true positive character. In other words, you can confidently do these things because you know your values are according to the peaceful solution and their true moral values. You can be confident about that. You can be bold about that. You can be assertive in that way. I'm not talking about cocky and arrogant. I'm talking about you don't have to worry. Okay? Just do what the program teaches you to do and you will have the result that you're looking for. Recognizing your value leads to self-respect. People who have self-respect are more likely to avoid risk-taking behavior. You know, like, you know, using drugs or premarital sex and the other things that we've discussed in this program so far. They strive to develop a positive character and do not succumb to negative pressure and influences. Okay? Because they're confident. Because they're confident that the decisions that they're making are according to true moral values and they're going to have a great result if they, if they resist the negative influence. If they resist talking back. If they resist retaliating, if they resist stealing, if they resist using drugs, if they resist over drinking, if they resist yelling at someone, if they resist disrespecting somebody, if they resist and put on that armor of the peaceful solution and resist these negative traits or negative influences, those fiery darts that are shooting at you constantly, you know, of trying to get through your armor, trying to piece, pierce your peaceful solution armor, you know. Now, if you have a, if you have a gap in your armor, you know, and, you know, you're missing one of those character traits, you know, you're going to have a hole in your armor and something can get through, you know. So you got to make sure that you clothe yourself completely with this program, you know. You got to make sure that everything that you have learned thus far, you're, you're, you're trying to apply it. You're practicing it. If you do that, that's what that's what the peaceful solution is looking for. That's what we want to see. We that's what the teachers want to see that you're trying to do it. That you're trying, you're making an effort. And if you fall, okay, we all fell and we all continue to fall many times, but we get back up, we dust ourselves off and we get back on track to a true moral character. We don't give up. Okay? If you don't give up, if you don't give up, you're successful, man. If you don't give up, you're successful. If you keep striving to overcome that, you're successful. Okay? That's success. You're practicing, then that's all that matters. You're practicing what you're learning. Okay, I got about three minutes left, so let me uh, continue here. It says, uh, <clears throat> imagine a world where there's no child abuse because more parents take responsibility for the safety and well-being of their children. I can tell you right now, the parenting program and the peaceful solution is exploding, okay? I don't mean it's like uh, the, the warehouse of books is on fire or anything. What I'm saying is there's a lot of people being sent to the parenting for parenting classes right now, okay? There's a huge, huge, uh, uh, down in the valley down there and down in uh, South Texas, a huge amount of people are being sent, Spanish-speaking and English-speaking people, for parenting classes. And what's really great about the parenting class, as we're going to eventually get into later on, is that it includes all the concepts that you're learning here in these first five books. So the parents are going to be learning the same positive moral character that they need to raise a child. And I think I I don't think a parent I don't think you wait till a parent gets in trouble to give them a parenting class, do you? Don't you think that they should already take a parenting class before they become a parent? That's what they ought to be doing. 
They ought to be teaching parenting classes in the school, in high school. They should teach a parenting class, you know, so that way they know how to be parents. They know how to raise their child, not just change diapers and, you know, uh, learn about baby formula. And, you know, that's not what we teach, you know. We teach how to raise that child in a moral way, how to, how to, how to develop that positive moral character yourself so you can instill it in your child through your example and through your teaching to them. And we do also talk about, you know, feeding, and et cetera, right, in the, in the program. But most mothers and fathers could teach me a thing or two about that. So, okay, but we can help them where they lack, and that's in the moral training. It says, some will say such a world is an impossible standard to achieve. However, the only way we can improve as individuals, and hence as a society, is to have a standard to work toward. Can you put up the next slide? Here's the standard. Standard means a level of quality, a moral rule that should be obeyed, a pattern or model that is generally accepted. Now, everybody generally accepts we shouldn't steal, we shouldn't murder. You know, they agree on those basic moral principles. They're universal. Remember, these moral principles are universal. We taught that in the character unit in the first few pages. There's certain things we all agree on. But you want to know what the standard of perfection is in moral character? It's right there. It's that book, The Peaceful Solution. That program is the standard of perfection. When it comes to moral character being taught, there's no program like it. And no, I'm not trying to sell it. Remember, we're not selling anything here. It's free of charge. If you want to donate to the Peaceful Solution, yes, we accept donations, okay? But your education is free of charge, okay? Nobody's charging you. And you know how much this kind of education is worth? <laughs> it's priceless. There is no price you can put on it, okay? So at this time, my time is up. Uh, our next class is going to be on uh, Wednesday, 11-8-2023. At 5.30 p.m., I hope you set your clocks back, right? We set them back last night? You all here, so you you know that. But some people might have forgot. I hope they don't forget by next class. Um, I, I certainly uh, uh, forgot earlier today, and I showed up for lunch an hour early up at the... At the... <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, uh, have a great evening. It's been a great class. Thank you for coming.